Who I am is more than the page allotted for my bio. My being permeates walls meant to keep me locked in to box up my soul. Who I am is deeper than the 30 second intro I receive to convince those listening I'm qualified to speak. Who I am is a heart full of dreams that I'm sometimes too afraid to speak aloud because of how big they are. Who I am is a feeler who takes on the pain of those around me even if I already have too much to carry. Who I am is a proud black woman whose very presence intimidates some yet still I stand tall. Who I am is a Christian whose faith defies how society portrays my religion. Who I am is memories of butter pecan ice cream and Cincinnati Reds baseball games with my papa and grandma on hot summer days. Who I am is more than the title that resides on my name tag and signature. Who I am is a story that has just begun. What if we led with who we are instead of what we do? So this idea was first introduced to me about five years ago when I was at a conference. The facilitator opened up the session and said that we'd begin with introductions. Now I probably rolled my eyes at the thought of doing the standard introductions our field had become so accustomed to. But I was pleasantly surprised when that was not the case. Instead of leading with what we do, we had to lead with who we are. We couldn't talk about our positions, our titles, or the institutions that we were affiliated with. Now, most people around me were shocked, some even a little scared, but everyone did it. And after that experience, I felt connected to the other people in the room in ways that I know would have not happened had we done introductions our usual way. Once I got a taste of that, I didn't want to turn back. I wanted to include this in everything I do because once you experience something extraordinary, how can you ever go back to the ordinary? So what if we decided to lead with who we are instead of what we do? What if we led with what we care about and value before mentioning our place of employment or the place we received our degrees? What if we took the time to hear who people are, what they're passionate about, and what their dreams are before hearing a list of awards they received? What if we prioritized who people are over what they do? What if we really listened? Now, understand how this idea can make some folks a little nervous and uncomfortable because it's different from the way that we've been socialized to talk about ourselves. Some criticisms might be that we work hard for our degrees and should be proud of them. Others might say that we deserve the awards we receive, or we just might work at a really sweet place. <laughs> and all those things are true, but aren't we so much more than that? Aren't we more than our job title? Don't we represent more than the employer we work for? Aren't the awards we receive just a piece of who we are? When we only lead with our titles and accomplishments, they can become masks for us to hide behind. So if I only talk about my educational status, I don't have to address the hard questions about what my education actually meant to me and how I apply what I learned in everyday life. If I only talk about the institution I came from, I miss the opportunity to discuss the culture and upheld and how that aligned or not with my personal and professional values. However, when we lead with who we are, we invite those around us to do the same. And that's when real connections are made. So I, I had this happen to me just recently. I was meeting with a student that I supervise as part of my job, and I knew that she was from Ghana because she talked about it in her application. I could have only led with what I do, but instead I decided to lead with who I am. I shared with her that my husband Emmanuel was born and raised in Ghana. Immediately a connection was made. She lit up. And then she talked about her upcoming trip back to Ghana in August, the culture, the language. It was great. And what stands out most about that interaction was the way that she pushed me outside of my comfort zone. So during our conversation, she asked if I'd ever made Emmanuel Ghanaian food. I said, no, because I didn't know how. Immediately she responded and said, um, I'm pretty sure Google has some easy recipes. <laughs> Womp womp, she was riding, that's what I did. I went to Google, found some easy recipes, made a trip to Jungle Gym's International Market, and then made a manual jollof rice and shit dough the next evening for dinner. And I have to say, he was pleasantly surprised at this gesture. See, when we lead with who we are, not only are real connections able to be made, but we have the opportunity to be pushed outside of our comfort zone. And I know I'm grateful that that happened to me. And so I ask you, how will you introduce yourself to the next stranger you meet? What will you include in your next bio? What will you lead with? I love hugs. My husband is my best friend. 
I care about creating a society where people are treated with dignity and respect. My faith is an anchor in my life. Baking is my therapy. And I value storytelling. That's what I want y'all to know about me. What do you want people to know about you? And how will you lead with who you are instead of what you do?